Hello and welcome to the Joinery Business Podcast. Today on the show, we are continuing our Get to Know Us series where we're looking more at the internals within the Joinery Coach and the Marketing Joint, getting to know a bit of the team, our thoughts around it, and what we're all about. Uh, Today on the show, we have on Aaron Gibb, who is our Manufacturing Excellence Facilitator here at the Joinery Coach. On the episode today, Aaron is going to talk a bit about his history in joinery, uh, what led him to join the joinery coach as well as his various mantras surrounding manufacturing excellence. Aaron is a fairly new member of the joinery coach but he is an absolutely invaluable member nonetheless. He has a very vast experience and history in the joinery industry and using a lot of cabinetry and uh, manufacturing software. So he has a lot of experience within the industry and a lot of really valuable insights that help other business owners reach that level of excellence they're hoping to achieve. Um, If you have any thoughts or feelings about today's episode, be sure to jump on over to the Joinery Business Hub on Facebook. And without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. Welcome everybody to the Joinery Business Podcast. We've got a special guest here today. This series that we're doing is around uh, meet the team behind the Joinery Coach. And I'm joined by uh, our amazing lean facilitator, Aaron Gibb. Aaron, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. It's amazing to have you not only in the podcast, but as a team member in the Journey Coach. So what we're going to do here today is just introduce you to everyone and talk a little bit about your history and why you're here and what, what you do well and, and all that fun stuff. Aaron, do you want to just um, just take this opportunity to tell everybody about yourself, maybe your journey through... I don't know if we want to talk about your journey through life. We don't have three hours, but um, <laughs> we, we might want to talk about your initial days, you know, in the industry. What got you started in the journey industry and all that fun stuff? Yeah, sure. So I suppose it started off when I was young, obviously. Uh, they, you know, you had work experience program, very fortunate work experience program. Um, I had a good friend who did work experience with the company that I eventually did work experience with. He didn't like it, but he said, hey, they're offering a a, a job if you want it and he knew I wanted out so yeah there I was the very next week and yeah started out sweeping floors and yeah, screwing kicks together like legs and stuff and bits and pieces together so all right so yeah. right from the very beginning before even a trade came into it you were putting cabinets together basically oh no 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 just like little kick l-shaped kick boards with back then they used to on their corner cupboards they put these little L-shaped kickboards under the corner cupboards. Yeah. Because, you know, they, they had um, just the way they constructed their cupboards, all their ends went to the floor, so there was no need for adjustable, like they didn't use adjustable feet yeah. uh, or plinths or anything like that. So, yeah, someone had to go through and, you know, like glue and screw them all down and wipe them so they didn't stick and then stack them away. And Yeah. Yeah, that was probably my first two weeks between that and sweeping the floor and cleaning out the, um, the beam saw blade channel where the, where the, where the blade runs. So, <laughs> wonderful job on a Friday afternoon. You go home, be snow white by the time you go home, <laughs> covered in dust. Yeah. Did, um, you, did you gain a love for the joinery industry doing that? or <clears throat> I wouldn't say a love. I gained a lot of, um, I suppose, respect because you had to do it and you'd have done it back then. A bit different to, I suppose, these days. But yeah, back then, you know, you were just given a task to do and that's what you did. You just sat at it and kept going. So, and I suppose with that, with that mindset, it actually, yeah, they come down, offered me a job, and um, off I went. So went back to school and said, unfortunately, they've offered me a job. I'm going to accept it, and thank you very much for having me. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a good experience. It, you know, it's tough when you first start out. It was the first job I ever had, never never worked anywhere else. So, yep. um, yeah, it was quite good. So after that, you know, obviously, you know, started doing the trade course and everything like that, and... Just continued on from then, you know, pretty much. I didn't do a lot of sort of basic stuff. So after, not long after I started, I, I went to work on a bench. Me and another, uh, an older gentleman that worked there. So, um, yeah, he was, oh, God, he would have been 62, <laughs> maybe, when I started. Picked me up for, for work every day because I was on his way to work. So, and dropped me home and even on days off, which was pretty amazing. Nice. Yeah, he'd be, he'd go home sick. So he'd like he'd come to work, open up, and then he'd go home sick. Wow. Um, 
but yeah, no, he was just a really, really, um, you know, good worker. Yeah. Just a hundred percent. And just, yeah, I sort of learned, I tried to learn as much as I could from him and just model his behavior when it comes to working. Cause I, I didn't really know much else like you know, first job. So you, you got to try and learn from somewhere. So I feel very fortunate to have been able to learn from someone who, you know, had his mind set ready to go and really worked hard. Yeah. So, and, you know, we can forget about all the, how do you do stuff in joinery? What he actually taught you was how do you care about the people around you? Yeah. It's probably even m- more difficult to teach, right? Cause most people don't try and pass those, those skills on. No. And I, I'm, and I mean, usually a, a lot of new guys, uh, especially a lot of new apprentices back in those days used to get a lot of like tricks and um, banter and stuff like that. But, I didn't really have a lot of that because we were just like, you know, he was focused on work. So I was focused on work. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, gradually moving through there, did a, a little bit like a little touch on the machines, but nothing major. Uh, that sort of came a bit later on. Yeah. Sort of went up to the front in that uh, we had like the assembly and then up the front is where you set them all up into full kitchens and yep. got all the hardware out, put the doors and bits and pieces on and yeah, did that. So after about three, well, it wasn't even three years. Yeah. They decided that it would be, I'd be much more beneficial upstairs on a computer designing the kitchens. Right. Uh, not no. through lack of being able to do the stuff, just because I showed like the initiative. I was very computer minded, um, helped them out a little bit with the computer side of things. Because at that point in time, we were we were using cabinetware. Right. So previous to Cabinet Vision, yeah. I know, I know it well, yes. Yeah. So we'd done a few bits and pieces and I helped them uh, work out and modify templates and then... Yeah, after that, they was like, well, I think you should probably come upstairs. <laughs> so I went up into the office and, you know, worked there for 12, 12 months. And then, um, yeah, we got cabinet vision and uh, basically took hold of that and ran with that for the next 12 years. Yes. You know, I pretty much spent my whole time was just playing around with cabinet vision and setting it up all the way. I think we started at six. I believe it was cabinet vision six. Yeah. And just, you know, started building it and. Yes. Doing all, all the necessary bits and pieces. So when you started back then, was there a CNC machine that cabinet wear was feeding or not at that stage? No, we had a beam saw and a point to point. Right. And was it feeding those? Yeah, it was feeding the, no, no, it wasn't. Sorry. Cabinet vision. When we first got put cabinet vision in and even cabinet wear, it fed the optimizing cut right software from HomeAg. Yep. And then... Yeah, so you do your cut right and then you send it down to the machine. Back then, when we used to take it down via a floppy disk, <laughs> how, how times have changed. <laughs> yes. But yeah, no, so yeah, we fed it through cut right and then cut right wrote all the programs, sent mm-hmm. it all to the machine. So, so you've been on the full ride where we had, you know, the introduction of design software that, that automated a lot of the stuff that happened in the office. And yeah. you're, you're one of the fortunate people that identified that you're really clever and you could actually jump into that part of the business. So your longevity in the, in the trade is almost guaranteed, right? Cause you're always on that sort of cutting edge looking for the next thing. Yeah. And I sort of, that's the, I suppose the part that I enjoy the most. I always like looking for something. There's always got to be a better way of doing something. doesn't mean it might be right. It's not always the first one you come up with, but yeah, yeah there's definitely always a better way to do something. So yeah, I, I sort of focused on that and pricing Dip my toe in sales for a bit, you know, doing designing, pricing, signing people off all within like a two hour window at a, one of our, the builders that we worked with, yeah. go down to their showroom for a couple of days a week. So yeah, there was a few challenges in that. We were very much a close business, a closed business as in, um, we didn't like information that could travel outside of the building. Uh, it was one of the owner's comments. So to have someone work remotely was quite a challenge, but we got there. It was probably a little scary um, for him too. Yeah, it would have been, yeah. Um, although he was he was pretty up with the technology, but just he didn't like technology. Yeah. <laughs> but no, moved on from then. You know, we got job men. We moved to a different factory. So I helped set up and do all the flows for the new factory. And yeah, gradually worked my way up uh, through production manager, then to operations manager. Yeah. So that's sort of a bit of a rundown. Yes, yeah, so you went the full gamut of it, right? Right from right from you know, yeah, sweeping the floor right to essentially the main person operating that business. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, and did pretty much pretty much all the steps in between all the systems, setting up systems. Jobman was another big one that we sort of went into and set up, and after a lot of after some training, um, I actually went to WA to do some training. We got really really good. Mm. Yeah, it took a couple of times as Jobman. You know, we burn it down twice and rebuild it, but 
Uh, I think the last one was re- except- worked exceptionally well. Yeah. Um, so I think I think we met um, when you were obviously working for that company and you guys were looking for some help. I think it was primarily around Jobman, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was help around Jobman and just our systems in general. Yeah. You know, we didn't, we weren't, we weren't very systematic. We didn't have, you know, we, we had lots of these programs and, and all this sort of stuff, but just didn't really have the flow. All the procedures was in your heads. You never had, you know, you never, we never had a procedure written down that I could ever remember seeing. So yeah, that was, that was when we reached out and that was, um, you know, that was actually at the time when we were doing the training with Jobman. Yeah. It was, you know, when we, we got your, uh, you know, your name come up and this is some things that we can look at. And yeah, we went down that path and, really made some improvements so yeah i remember i remember some of the some of the little milestones along the way when we were really really implementing job man you know your business management system to its fullest and i think you came to me and said we've discovered that we're being invoiced twice in some cases yeah yeah um that was probably one of the biggest things that was our biggest benefit we got out of jobman to be perfectly honest and it was sort of just that pre-covid part so after covid i think everything sort of settled down everything was much more systematic companies you know your suppliers were very much on top of everything but before that like it'd be nothing to pay to get an invoice for the same product three four times yeah never even know it and you would yeah exactly you would never be able to pick it up so um i think actually that was one of the things that they said to us when we first purchase job because back then it was a purchase software you know oh you know you'll get your you know your return on investment will be within six months and i thought you know it's a, quite a large investment <laughs> you know f- fifty five thousand dollars. i thought this is a large investment this is not gonna surely you're not gonna like get return on this straight away anyway yeah it didn't take long it only takes you know, and it, yeah and we didn't really um we had a couple of goes at trying to do this but we did it all like, from the account side of it backwards yeah uh, which i definitely wouldn't recommend doing but in saying that though we did do it that way and we actually found a few invoices and they were quite large you know a couple of packs of whiteboard and it doesn't seem like much but you know we were sort of ordering in the vicinity of six packs of whiteboard a week um so you know you get a couple of packs of whiteboard once a month that comes through doesn't take long to add up to that 50 grand so What we're really talking about here is your your skills, your abilities, your knowledge um, growing and, and expanding on how to implement a business management system, regardless of which one it was. Like Jobman is the one that you're using, but they're all yeah. very much the same. They all have the same approach. You know, we try and systemize things, get everything into one, you know, into one environment. Quoting flows through to purchasing, flows through to factory management. It should all kind of flow through. Systemizing the business became a real focus for you, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, and only because I suppose before, before we met you guys, we didn't really know the understanding of how systemizing your business would make the improvements, but, you know, after spending some time and doing some of the workbooks and bits and pieces, yeah, we definitely did notice the big difference that we got out of, you know, systemizing. I mean, our sales process, I believe was fantastic. We went from an absolute dismal conversion rate, um, under, under 5% to quite large, you know, we went up to about, I think it was about 43% which was the last time that I did the actual check yeah. Um, before I left the, the pre- my previous employment. So that is a massive increase for us. And we went from doing something ridiculous, like nearly 200 quotes a month we would do. We would pump out. We had three people that were just doing quotes. Yeah. That's all That's all they did every and day winning, of the week. Winning almost none of them. Uh, yeah. And realistically, I mean, we were very fortunate. We had work, you say, like a, you know, like we had constant work because we had, we would do quotes for people, but they would they were picky. They would always pick us. Like the kitchens were coming through us, regardless of yeah. You know, we didn't really have much of that. That's um, just how they had a relationship with the owner of the business. So you know, there was no issues. It was like that was predetermined. That you know, if that, yeah, if that makes sense. Um, so even though we had predetermined work, our conversion rate was still rather small, considering all of the other. You know, we would we had one guy out on the road full time that went five days a week to pick all people's houses. And, you know, so we still had a very, very small conversion rate. And then um, I know you and me, we work quite hard on the sales process. And with the, the sales team, which was only, it ended up being only one girl at the end that we had. And she, she was wholly and solely the sales for the entire business just because we had a very, very streamlined system. We yeah, didn't and need worked. all the drafters. And because yeah. we used to, you know, we used to draw all our kitchens. So, we had all these drafter keys and for cat vision, as you know, you got to purchase them all. Once we changed our 
sales process, you know, we could get rid of three keys if we wanted to. Obviously, you would never get rid of them much because back then we paid for them mm. uh, and they weren't a subscription base. So, yeah, you definitely wouldn't get rid of them if you owned them, but, you know, we didn't use them yeah. not like we did. So, yeah, it was that was a massive big turning point as well. So getting the business, business systemized was was a was a wonderful experience, um, and I really enjoyed working with you in those times as well. Um, the sales process was another thing you and I did together, which was great. You also jumped in feet first, which was quite unusual for an operations manager to jump into essentially take over the finances. Yeah, I, was sort of, I wouldn't say jump in; it was probably more of a fell into. <laughs> you needed yeah, someone needed it. to do it. Yeah, we did. We had, we had, at one point we needed someone who could um, do it. I really, you know, I had no training in it whatsoever. It was sort of, yeah, basically fall into it and and see if you can swim. Yeah, we, we really come across some challenges. Uh, it was a challenging time, you know, everyone was coming out of, oh, COVID had just sort of finished and we were just getting back into the flow of things, but, you know, everyone was tightening up. As you can imagine, you know, the business has got accounts here and accounts there, but then, you know, everyone starts really sort of squeezing down on those yeah. limits and bits and pieces. So to work through that, and also have the ability to do some of the, the things on the finance side, you know, like uh, just simple things like pay off cars. That was, you know, like, the, you know, every business has like a leased car or something like that. You know, to be able to pay those sorts of thing off, save up a certain amount of money, like I saved up quite a bit amount of money to move our factory around. Yeah, so I'm working uh, towards that because that's... Oh, yeah, sorry. You know, the, the finance part of it was really good because you basically got control of, of the, you know, the slide and the numbers recovered because of it but part of that recovery was really driven by efficiency gains in the factory because the numbers were only, will only reflect really the results in the factory anyway so yeah. um talk a little bit about your journey through understanding lean um which is really what you're here to help other people understand and you know working working with us at the joinery coach is now yep. teaching people what you learned while you were on that lean journey so um yeah it definitely definitely is a journey um First time around, definitely no, did no good. But after many, many tries, really started to, to make a difference when the guys would make the difference for them and, and they would come through and they would say what they wanted them to do. You know, one of the ones that I'm most proud of, I've got two that I'm really proud of from the from the guys in the factory was our edge band storage and our off cut storage. Yeah. You know, we had, we had uh, and it was, I was actually talking with Hamish at the time, we were talking about, um, you know, um, a painted square on the ground something as simple as that to say if it's if it fits within this square throw it out yeah and that was one thing that you always said bruce you know like the waste is not worth the labor and i thought i know if i start throwing this stuff out it'll, it'll kill me but at the end of the day you know we stopped doing all that sort of stuff and our overtime came down because we weren't spending time you know sorting through boards to find the one that we had yeah to find that little the white melamine that's not worth yeah it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you, I didn't realize that you would spend that much time on it. To be perfectly honest, I just thought you know, because I'd always in the factory when I was in the factory, and throughout the whole time that I was there before we moved to the new one, you know, we used to keep every little piece. You know, yeah, you know, seven hundred by three fifty. That was yeah. it. That was a keeper. Keep yeah. that one. And, you know, we, <laughs> we had and there were storage racks all the way around the, the old factory that was all different sizes, and they had to be allocated going there. And no one ever cleaned them out until you. You know, went to cut it for a door, and then the colours didn't match anymore. And yeah, yeah, no, that was a. They were two really, really big changes that we made, which enabled the guys to actually throw it out. Like, and they were very, very dubious. Like, I still remember one of the young fellas. He's just like, if I throw that out, you're going to sack me for wasting stuff. <laughs> but you know, he turned out to be really like he was. They he got one of the other guys to build the rack, so he took the. We used to use these. Um, they weren't, I think they're the A3 project plans, but they used to be, the, I, used, I had them on the little A4, it was yep. just little action steps. Yep. It wasn't a massive plan, but it was just small steps that we did for everything that helped the guys. You know, we talked about it, this is what we're doing, who's doing it, and when we need it done by. That yeah. was pretty much all the information we had. Yeah, just yeah. little steps, little things, little actionable things. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you don't, and that was one thing that I didn't realize, I suppose, how quickly the one like the little tiny wins little tiny little bits and pieces that you do make a massive difference you know we put up a shadow board for all the tools for the machines right near the machines area we focused on the specific tooling for the machines you know that only got used on this machine in this you know at the front like we had a specific allen key that did the glue pot so it was chained to the machine inside 
so that it could never go away from that glue pot. Just yeah. simple things like that made quite a big difference. Having a spot to put some put things somewhere. So the shadow board with all the tools was very clear. We had glue. So, you know, we used to, we used to carry about, about 100 kilos of each glue uh, at any one time because you know, we sort of, you go through it and it did take a bit of a while for it to come back here. We'd order it and it was about a three-week lead time. So we always made sure we had plenty of glue, but certain spot for the glue that slid under our return, it rolled out was very clearly labelled what was in it, what colour, whether it was neutral or white. Each had their own little ba- like a basket with a you know little chain, like those little ball chains you get on the pens. Yeah. Just inside, just enough to scoop it up into the bucket that they put into the hopper. So your journey through working in a business like that stretched over how many years? 20, 23 years? 22 years it was. 22 yeah, years. So, so you've yeah. really done your time in the in a business doing this and yeah. we're fortunate to have you on our team now because now what you're doing is you're taking everything that you've learned and you're passing it on to other people tell us a little bit about the journey since you've been coaching a trainer with the joiner coach what are some of the the experiences that you've had so far that stand out to you one of the biggest one the biggest standout is um sometimes actually just seeing because i'd only ever been involved in like a sort of relatively medium sort of shop factory then going to a, a you know one that was nearly twice the size of what we had previous uh, so you know like to me space was never an issue although we filled it up with machines and bits and pieces but to see what some people can do in the space that they've got and how they use it has actually been quite amazing to go around and see a few different factories and stuff and just and i think to myself god i don't, I don't know how you know it sort of sets you back and you go oh that's a really good efficient. And just realise, I suppose, how efficiently they use the space, even though it's not, you know, as probably as efficient as it could be. But you just think, oh, how can they all get all that done in such a small space and in random, you know, random um, areas too? Like some aren't even joined together. So yes, many yeah, many little 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 yes, could, yeah, factories all kind. Of, yeah, you know, and so to me, like, a, that was a bit of a an eye opening experience. I was like, wow, surprising what can be done. Um, from someone else, but I've never had the experience of a, um, a smaller shop, so I didn't know that. But, um, yeah. yeah, when it comes to, uh, I suppose, my journey, um, I've spent a lot of, as, as most people know, I've spent a lot of time um, with Nigel, so we've spoken a lot. So my so it's my in-depth knowledge of the lean tools and sort of how to use them has, you know, grown a lot more. I suppose I spent a lot of time, you know, I'd get the tool and I'd, I'd work out how to use it, then go and use it and try and use it. And that's sort of as far as I got because I had, um, I was very, I was very much calendar driven. I had to t- a certain amount of time to do this, a certain amount. Of, and then once the time limit was up, I would stop and I would go and do something else. Yeah. So, and I found that helped a lot. Like that was a massive, just for, like for me personally, that was massive. That helped me get through a lot of the times. Yeah. But yeah, no, like along the, along the journey, um, you know, just go getting to refresh. You know, because it is a journey. I always thought, you know, you learn it once and it's, that's it. You, you don't really oh, you yeah. don't think about it anymore. Going back so, and relearning something that yeah, you, you knew is often good. Yeah. And I was very fortunate. So I've got all the workbooks that I've had from previous. I'm actually going back through now and just, and, and I can re look at that and what I wrote then to now that sort of knowledge that I know now. So I'm, you know, that that's quite changed. You know, you sort of sit back, oh, you know, you didn't quite understand that a hundred percent. You know, you might have been sort of eighty percent there, and you can roughly get it going. But if you, if I could, if I understood it back then, now I thought I knew. You know, you might have got a much better efficiency. So yeah, and it's always that journey, right? Like that that learning journey. Yeah, and that that's it. It's all been a journey. You know, doing the um the training and assessing certificate. That's that's a that's a journey that we're sort of I'm going through. Yeah. Um, and even that, you know, is it's good to get back into that. I really enjoy the learning side of things. So just to be really clear on what you're saying, we've actually had you go through the formal becoming a, a trainer and assessor cert for and training and assessing. Um, yeah. Whether you use it for our certified training or whether you use it in other areas that are not formally certified, there's still a massive benefit in teaching you how to, you know, how yeah, to well, work at that level, isn't there? Yeah. Well, like even just simple things. Being able to get up and talk in front of people. Yeah. Uh, I, I know, Bruce, you were away with me when we went up to Queensland the other week. And even then I was like, hang on a sec. I, I think without, I've had to do a few presentations on the, um, through the course. And look, I could do the, the, 
I did two lots of meetings at my old previous work, you know, the, the boarding meeting, then passed that on. So I just did two lots of weekly meetings. Mm. So I definitely could, but it was still a bit of a, you know, I was still very cautious about how to do it or shy, I suppose is the easiest way to put it. But yeah, it's actually helped me to be able to present a little better and, you know, and it's all through learning. So I'm going to get better the more, the more we sort of do it, the more learning, the more feedback that I can receive. So yeah, because we're all kind of in this stage where we've got, we've got this stuff that we want to give people, right? And it's a matter of how can we effectively give it and effective presentations is absolutely part of that, you know, because that's how someone's going to receive it effectively. Yeah. So tell me, Aaron, um, have you been surprised at the fact that you've been across uh, a number of clients, in fact, probably most clients, and some are big and some are small? Are you surprised at how similar they all are, regardless of their size? You know, everybody says we're different, we're unique, our business is only like us, yeah. nobody else is like us. But have you been surprised at how, really, how similar everybody is? Yeah, and and that's probably when you see people and they say, oh, you know, we do we do things differently or we do a lot of custom stuff. Um, at my previous work, we, we did do custom stuff, but not very often, you know, like might be twice a month or three times a month or something. Like it was very much you know, getting the, you know, you got standard kitchens and bits and pieces, but, you know, we had the same approach because we knew nothing different. So the, mm. the custom stuff was always done as a, a standard, but yeah, I, I do see people that, that like to sort of get that bit of a difference, um, you know, and that's, we, we actually had a chat this morning um, and Nigel was in the call as well. And um, one of the things we come up with was when you do come up with the stuff that's not standard, um, you know, kitchen construction or cupboard cabinets or something like that. It's, it's even more important to make sure that you apply your standard work to it. Yeah. And that way you can really make, you know, if it's this part, it's, it's only going to take this long. That's still the same as the standard work that we have for a normal cupboard. So yeah, well, yeah I think those, those little bits and pieces. I think it's, it's just such great having you on the team because you bring such value, such relevant experience and, and uh, language and, and conversation to the team as well. And, uh, one thing that I think has been really valuable right off the bat was just your ability to relate to people because you're not that far out, not that far removed from actually doing it, are you? No, no, definitely not. And look, I kept my, no, I suppose, finger on the pulse. I love to be, I love to get dirty. So I always, you know, regardless of going up into the office many, many years ago, I always did stuff on the floor. And, and even, like, even, even moving forward, you know, we did, we did time testing. I was like, God. Oh, these guys that sort of, you know, they wanted an hour recovered, they? they're taking the, the Mickey here. So you'd go and you'd do it all. And you'd, and we, we had, at that point, we actually had an extra factory. So we were like, well, I'm going to take all my stuff over there and I'm just going to go ahead and see how quickly I can do it. But, you know, quickly realized that it takes a mixture of both. You know, I was obviously trying to prove a point. So I would be a lot faster. But these guys had to, to realize that I wasn't as silly as what I, what they thought because, you know, they, there was only two guys left who knew me when I was in the factory floor. So yeah. none of them had ever known that I was, you know, worked on the factory floor or did anything like that. So, yeah, well, yeah look, I definitely did. Definitely did all that. Yeah. All that fun stuff. Well, this has been really good. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's great for the general public because there'll be a lot of people listening to this podcast right now. They were not our clients and don't know that much about us. Um, and this is a really good insight for people to understand, you know, how we do things as a, as a business. Um, we are only working with people, relating to people in a way that makes sense, right? So we're relevant to the joiner industry. Now, um, I've got a really important question for you, Aaron. Um, okay. if, if you were given one performance that you could see and one, only one performance for the rest of your life, from someone that is alive or dead, could be a band or a group or an individual, but you can only see one person for the, you know, for the remainder of your life as a performance. Who would you choose? Frank Sinatra. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I think 100%. It's, a great, it's a great choice. I'm willing to bet. We'd love to hear some feedback on this. If anybody's willing to post a comment in whatever box you're listening to this on, I'm willing to bet most people wouldn't have guessed you would have said that. No, uh, probably not. Because I certainly didn't. You did take me by surprise yeah. when you said yeah. it. So, um, I kind of agree with you. I think it would be a wonderful concert to see. Yeah. Uh, not a, I wouldn't want a big concert. I would just like a little lounge performance would do me just nicely. Just sipping a little bit of whiskey, listening to Frank sing. Yep. I love it. What are you most looking forward to in the coming year, Aaron? Uh, realistically, I'd, I just I look forward to, to passing on some information that I've learned and also just trying to help out people 
get to where they want to get to and, and I suppose realise that they're moving towards that. You know, you yeah. might have your goal up here, but to be able to, that was one thing that I always thought that was important to me and I didn't see that. It took me a long time to realise that. So, yeah. To see I, the little you know, needle moving as that, you go. That's exactly right. Like to see those, that progression and just see, you know, this is how far we've come. That sort of spurs you on to get more. So, yeah, that's that's what I really want to see in the coming year. Nice. See people moving on, see people getting some information and helping out, you know, through practical things. Because I do think that's a, a big part of being able to to get it done. I know that helped me because I would, you know, I'd jump off the call and I'd be out in the factory doing it. Generally, most times it was after work hours, but you know <laughs> what I mean? But you, you're out doing it. And I think yeah. that's probably one of the biggest things that we need to to um well that i would like to see everyone you know be able to, to take some information put it into an action sheet and and go out and get started because you know you can spend all your life planning something because i was definitely really bad for it bruce you could probably i know there's a few times bruce had told me you can't just keep talking or planning about it you just got to go and do it so i think that's probably um yeah where we we where we can get unstuck well we, we certainly spend too much time yeah, we, you know, in conversations just broadly around the industry, we we do hear a lot yeah. of people that'll say, well, that will never work. But they've never yeah. actually tried it, so they really don't know whether it would work or not. You know, and that's the thing, right? Unless you actually roll up your sleeves and get doing something, you actually have no idea whether it's going to work or not. No. And so you you are one of those people that not everything worked, of course, but you did try everything and came out the other side with a lot of things that did work. Yes. Well, this has been really good, Aaron, and I hope uh, a lot of people get to know you a little bit better from this this podcast. Thanks for jumping on. All right, Aaron. Well, thanks for joining us on the podcast. And um, no worries. Thank we'll you very much for having us. Yeah, no worries. We'll see you soon. Okay. Catch up. Cheers. <laughs>